Hello and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam show with Steve and Adam. Woo! Woo! It's us. Hey, it's, it's us again. I can't believe it. How did we do this? Been a while, man. Been a while. I know. Well, I mean, we did our we did our MMS promo video like, you know, like a week ago, but you know, still. It has been a minute since we've just done our own yeah. our own our own deal. So, we'll see how this goes. Um we have, we brought in all these other heavy hitters, and they've been carrying the load for us while we've been busy. Uh, you still haven't found a house. Like, come on, dude, I hurry up. Um, Jeez, man. I, I, I must admit, though, uh, the market here is quite interesting. One of the properties we started looking at, it's already gone down half a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It is spectacularly amazing. But anyway... We're not here to talk about the housing market in Sydney and Sydney and being super expensive. No, we are not. What are we here to talk about, Adam? Well, so uh, as you know, Intune.Training is all about the cloud. And so we're going to talk about co-management. That's not cloud. Well, I, I mean. need to have my servers for that. But it is about the cloud. All right. So in previous episodes, we so have had. So this is the guests. journey to the cloud? Oh, it's like a bridge. And a destination. No, we're, we're and not. And then you burn the bridge, the bridge down when you're done. We don't, we don't talk about the bridge. Like the guy who came up with that one's gone. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So anyway, we're going to talk about co-management. We're going to, but we're going to take a different, a different approach to co-management tonight. So the today, today tonight, it's mid. It's come on. It's it's night for me. It's nine o'clock. Um, the Lunchtime. so we've we've had some guests on. We had Danny on before, and we had Ravi. We had Ravi on, and uh, we've we've had some conversations around co-management before, and just kind of like a, you know, all the kind of the things you could think about co-management, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and things. Um, but a lot of the co-management related stuff that we've talked about has been the like, oh, just you know, use which whichever side of the fence you want to be on, just and straddle it as long as you want, and that kind of stuff. Um, but we're going to talk about how to actually do your migration from co-management to from going from on-prem to the cloud using co-management as a tool to get there, not as a tool to let you straddle the fence indefinitely. Um, I, I get the feeling somebody on the calls recently done this. So uh, I am. We're almost there. We're so close. Uh, we're almost done so with this close. with this process. So yes. Yeah, so tonight's tonight's episode is really going to be today's episode. This episode. How about that? Is going to be about uh, my journey to co management uh, through co management to full Intune cloud native management and uh, where we are in that in that process and the current lessons learned. Felt like it was a good a good moment to take a take a moment to reflect on all the weird things that have we've gone through to get here and just the challenges that we've seen. So that's it. That's what we're and gonna do. I'm 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 gonna throw something out there. Yes, we are well aware there has been some huge announcements over the last week or two. But we're gonna focus on co management. Yeah because, because it's more interesting. Because here's the deal. Uh if you can get co management sorted out like and and get past co management and get into the cloud and get cloud managed, all these other things like Windows 365 coolness coming all make more sense because the things you're going to do in Intune yep. to manage your on-prem devices that you're going to move to the cloud um, all benefit you because they all still apply for your Windows 365 devices. So that's kind of cool. But let's not go down that path. Let's talk about Indeed. co-management. So first of all, co-management is just simply the idea that you can co-manage your on-prem infrastructure with your with group policy and config manager and and in tune. Stop it, Steve. Stop it. Group policy, really? Let me get, like, let me get the intro out of the way. Come on. I, I thought we went to in tune so we didn't have to do group we, policy. We, we are, Steve. That's what we're talking oh. about. Is the how we're getting there. We know group policy sucks. We want to get off it as soon as possible, and we're getting there. All right. So let's talk about the strategy on on how how we can get there. All right. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share my screen because we gotta have something, and I gotta talk with my mouse, uh, or I'll talk with my hands. So let's do the mouse. Let's All right. do that. So config manager, my old friend. It's been a while. Yeah. Hey, so quick question. Can you see my 
w- your window of yourself, the window of yourself oh. on my screen as I share. I can see that's a neat thing I learned today or yesterday. I didn't know that that hid, so I always hide it, thinking I'm sharing it when I'm sharing my screen, and it's weird. So, so, so the problem there, though, and this is the oh, we're going off on the rails already. This yes, is yes, yes. You can't click anything behind that image. No, it's fine. I can move it. It's it's okay. It's not. A, I just didn't want to be broadcasting you while I'm broadcasting my screen. It's just weird. But I'm comfortable anyway. being on the screen twice. That's fine. All right, here we go. So when you're in your Config Manager console, you can go to this section called Cloud Services, and you so go to go Cloud to Attach. Administration, Cloud Attach. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, co-management. And inside of co-management, you and we've already gone through this on Ravi's video, and like we've gone in depth on how to do this. But just in case you haven't watched those, just giving you a quick primer on where what we're talking about, where we're at, and all that stuff. So um, there is Cloud Attach, which is a whole different thing we're not talking about tonight. Co-management is the transference of allowing you to transfer the management sliding the plane, sliding the sliders from Config Manager into Intune. And the process to do that is very simple, but the back end preparation that you is need to required. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> right. But there are some really, really interesting gotchas that have caught us off guard on some of these things. Part of it may like be what? the fact that I needed to revisit some documentation that actually had some things clarified. But part of it is just like, oh, well, I didn't really know that was going to happen. But we're, well, we're there now, and I'm not moving them back, so I guess we got to hurry up. So that's kind of worked. Okay, so in this environment, we haven't done anything with co-management yet. Um, and okay. because I, I used to have it, and then I ripped everything out the other day working on something else. And, oh, my MMS session, that's why. And oh, I haven't slid them back. Oh, MMS Labs. Yeah. All right. So here we go. So we've got all of these, uh, com- these configuration things that we can impact with these sliders. So compliance policy. Let's talk about what the heck are the compliance policies. Well, those are the things that are over here in your compliance settings, like configuration items and baselines. So and DCM. I, I, I've not ever used any of these other things. I don't know anybody. Maybe. I don't know, like, does anybody even use these? But if you are, probably some of those roll into it. I'm not an expert on those areas, but I do know how to use configuration items and baselines. One of the key things about configuration items and baselines that you need to have prepared before you slide that slider for co-management is you need to ensure that your, um, if you want this policy, if you want your your uh, baseline to con- to apply continually to your devices, regardless of where that co-management is, whether it's if you slide it over to Intune, if you don't check this box, they stop evaluating your on-prem baselines as part of their compliance uh, checks. So you effectively, so it's, it's, a, it's a two-edged sword. This is great because you can granularly one at a time disable your baselines as you create new proactive remediations in the cloud. So it's it's a great thing to be able to do. So the other one that I'm going to call out here, though, Adam, is that you've got two checkboxes there. Obviously, we've got saying make it available to the co-managed devices, but the evaluate the baseline as part of the compliance policy. Yes. Did you run into this issue? I'm just curious if you had this running in your environment. And- no, I've, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think I enabled that at one point and then I said, eh, I'm not ready to do compliance policies yet. And the security team, we still have to work out some things around what compliance looks like. And so, eh, didn't really do it. But just for reference, here's the Intune compliance policies. So yep. this is how you can create uh, custom compliance policies. And then before we go down that rabbit hole too far, let me just show. When I said proactive remediations, if you haven't been here before, go into go under reports because that's the obvious place that you would yep. run these. Um, somebody in fix this, analytics. Uh, go to endpoint analytics, and proactive uh, then remediations. We, we go to proactive remediations. That's a report. It's a report that's not a report, but it's hiding in the report section. So yep. be aware. So to take to take the step back. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, to take the step back to where we were looking earlier is in the config manager portal, when we sit there and we have that checkbox selected for compliance, this is where you can do custom compliance policies for your config manager computers to say, is my computer compliant? And you sit there and go, oh, cool, that, that's a cool metrics. But what it actually also adds in there is under conditional access, we can say, 
that computer has to be compliant. If it's not compliant, you're not getting access to corporate data. And that yes. is money for your security team. Yeah, and so what that what that also means is that if you have not, like, so we've got a, I've got a ton of CIs and baselines. Like, I, we, yep. we use this heavily. So right now, right now, I've got all of all of them except a handful with this checkbox checked because I, I yep. want them to always apply. But at some point, I'm going to go through my CIs and, and pull out all the scripts that I've got in there and figure out, OK, do I still need them? Number one. But if I do, then I will go through and rewrite the, each of the scripts in them to work as proactive remediations and in into. So, so, but what's, so but the I'm, beautiful I'm thing is that I can leave there. them here as long as I need to because of co-management while while allowing me to now to now enable Intune um, uh, uh, compliance policies and things. Yes. Uh, hang on before you jump into that the, the extra thing. The one thing to know, though, is that proactive remediations, far as I'm aware, because <laughs> I think I did this in production, are not governed by that slider. Correct. And so, so because you can actually apply endpoint analytics as part of um, config manager environment because it rolls up into that desktop analytics scenario. Right. But what? But so the point here is that don't come in and create proactive remediations and deploy to all workstations or all devices, assuming that, oh, I haven't slid my slider over yet. And so they won't get these until I slide the slider or I've I've put my slider so, in the pilot and only my so, pilot devices will get it. It doesn't so work Adam, that way. What? Adam, what you're trying to say is you did exactly what we tell everybody else to not do and target all systems. I didn't unintentionally do it. No, I knew I knew about I discovered it early on at some point. I was testing something and said, oh, yeah, that's cool. That actually doesn't isn't governed by co-management. But the way I'm looking at it is PRs are a replacement for CIs and baselines. And if that's the case, then I would assume that they are governed by that slider, which they are not. And so just be aware, um, don't do that. This is the lessons well, learned lesson. What, 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 what I'd actually say is proactive remediations really aren't your replacements for your CIs and baselines? Yes, they are. At a high level. And the reason why I'm highlighting that is because you can't do go off and create collections. You can't go off and create compliance policies or those good proactive remediations. You know what? So, that's a very good, that's very valid. So if you're, right, if you're using, if you're using the, um, this setting, the if you're using your this as part of a, your CIs as part of a compliance assessment, then yes, that would make sense. That yeah, the PR is not a replacement. Um, yeah. We don't. Yeah, we're not. We're not. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's the difference in our environment. We're not really relying on this for anything at this point. Um, but, but if we were, that would make a lot of sense. And and that one there, believe it or not, is um one of the main reasons why customers are doing that conversion to co-management is to slide the slider for compliance policies because then they can start sitting there putting in their configuration baselines and configuration items to say hey is my device compliant yes no you get access to corporate resources or not i really like that because then yeah so if you if it's easier or if the functionality doesn't exist that you need to assess compliance on in intune yet and you're still in Config Manager, you can slide the slider over that enables you to then create compliance policies here yep. uh, and conditional access policies here yep. that then tie into the compliance that you've created uh, through those things. So I like that. That's great. Hmm. Good stuff. See, right there. We've, we could end the episode right here, but what's the fun in that? We're not going to, though. because No, we're definitely not. Um, all right. So... And that's number one. Go, it's that's not a conditional access or compliance episode. Let's 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 move nope. on. Let's keep going. Keep going. All right. Next thing. Actually, I really want to save this one to the end. I, I, there's okay. a reason. But it's just this one, but not not this one. Um, yep. So don't be confused by this. This slider isn't isn't just the two sub items. This slider in and of itself is an item. It's um, a scary one. And and it's a scary one. And also, there's another item in here uh, that is non-disclosed. There's a they've broken out endpoint protection and BitLocker as two separate items in the back end. There, this is broken out 
um, if you were to find it in the database, it, it's neat. Um, uh, they've broken out BitLocker and endpoint protection into su two separate items, even though it's one slider right now. I think we'll see in the future that that will ship or that will come that way. I'm not telling you think anything NDA. I'm just assuming based on what I've seen in the database. <laughs> so there you go, because that used to not be separate and now it is a separate value. Um, yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, but the thing about endpoint protection to to know is that it is one of the policies that causes other things to no longer work, and that's the that's so it is a blocker. You um, because endpoint protection versus compliance policies, like compliance policies, it's not like I'm configuring two things in in two different places, and I'm saying this one wins or this one wins, like we're going to do with the GPOs and stuff. Endpoint protection is I've got defender policies managed by GPO or by config manager, or I've got defender policies managed by Intune. They are not, you cannot manage them from both places. And so if you are managing, if you have deployed Intune policies for defender, they will I'm, 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 take I'm over. Flag on the plate there. What? You can't successfully manage it. From both places, from I'm both sure places. you can give it a. I'm yeah, sure you can give try. it a, a, a very good try. But and I'm if sure you go and find the reg keys. But if you've applied a config manager endpoint or defender policy to the device, and config manager knows about it and is managing, it, you slide the slider. The co-management workload on the client will flag that policy as non-applicable, and it will no longer apply if there is a competing Intune policy applied. So That's what good. that means is you can slide the slider for endpoint protection without impacting the ability to continue to get defender policies applied uh, from Config Manager until the point that you deploy your Intune policies to the device. Oh, that's that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, at least I'm that's, pretty sure that's the way it worked. It seemed like it. Kind of makes sense. Now, the <laughs> problem, though, is that, as I mentioned, BitLocker is combined with this. The BitLocker slider does not really play nice because what happens is when you slide this slider, you also slide BitLocker. And we did this. We we said, oh, we're going to roll out Defender and replace uh, SEP. And we did this. We slid this over to production so that, but we didn't we didn't add any devices to to or I guess we slid it to pilot is what happened. For and but we were slowly adding devices in and stuff. And eventually we slid this all the way over, but we didn't uninstall SEP. That was the blocker. Okay. So we didn't uninstall SEP. And as long as SEP was there, Defender didn't light up. So the Defender policies were irrelevant at that point anyway. We weren't transitioning from Defender management on-prem to Defender management in the, in the cloud. We were transitioning from SEP to Defender in the cloud. And that's yeah. different. So that, that makes sense. SEP was, then... SEP was keeping Defender from applying, so we just slid the slider. Cool. We're getting yeah. we can get Perfect. Defender policies once we un, once we uninstall SEP. The policies will all be applied already. We won't have to. We didn't want to have a gap. You know, we wanted the policies to be there. Yep. Well, makes what sense. we what we didn't know is we had already moved our the BitLocker management and MBAM into the console or into in Config Manager a couple releases ago, and. Um, the client stopped receiving MBAM policies, even though it did not have a, uh, cloud, a corresponding issue. Intune policy. It didn't remove the MBAM management or the MBAM policies from the device because this is one of those areas that Microsoft does not remove. They they they're not going to leave you unprotected, and so they if you're going to if they're going to remove one, they're going to replace it with something else. You have to have a competing thing to apply to override it. So that yep. was great. So so MBAM and BitLocker were technically still working, and I could my keys were still getting escrowed to Bit MBAM, or to the Config Manager flavor of MBAM, still working until until we deployed the policies from BitLocker, and then they took over. Um, however, it's kind of strange because even when BitLocker policies have taken over, the MBAM agent's still there, and it's still hijacking the uh, the key. So if you do a key rotation, MBAM the MBAM is also rotating the key a second time and it's getting really weird. So we've got to hurry up. And so right now we're trying to get our, our techs into the BitLocker console management and Intune so they can start using it. Uh, well, you know, your users can self-service those keys. Right, so we're trying, to, we're trying to get all of that out the door because I'm having to escrow all of our existing keys to Azure AD with a script um, because until the key rotates, it won't send it to Azure AD. 
So we have to sell. We have but to when, run a script to make when it rotates to send it to AAD. It then rotates again because MBAM is saying that it needs to rotate. Well, no, no, it's not rotating to send it to Azure AD. It's just taking the existing one and escrowing it so it matches in the two locations. But if I go retrieve it from the cloud console, and and I uh, and then that triggers a rotation, the, it'll rotate. Or even if I click the rotate key uh, in the console in the yep. cloud, it will trigger the rotation locally on the device. And then when it, when you reboot the box or whatever ends up happening. MBAM will kick back in and say, I don't recognize this key, and it will re-rotate it. So you end up getting the key escrowed twice because you'll get the original one that was there, the one you rotated will get sent back up, and then the next one that gets rotated gets sent back up. I know I'm going really fast, but like, it was, it's been a really fun ride with MBAM. It hasn't yes. broken anything, but it's not quite right. I've asked, I've, I've, sent, I've sent relevant information on, I've sent this whole package of information up, to, up the chain to ask for some help to get some clarity on what this is supposed to do and if this is behaving oh, yeah. properly. Um, so if you guys are watching this, you might, I don't know, figure out what's going on there. But ultimately, so I think we're gonna have to there... send a command to the devices to uninstall MBAM now, once we get everything up to the cloud. Well, what I was gonna say there, Adam, is what you're saying is as part of that, uh, sliding the endpoint protection. If you're using MBAM, send the uninstall command to those devices that now are under Intune management for endpoint protection. Yeah, um, but but from what from everything we can tell from our experience at this point, it appears that it all just still works. It's just kind of a really kludgy behavior. Um, but really, escrowing those keys up is is a key for sure. Um, I'll post a link in the description for uh, there's Oliver Kisselback. Uh, did I say that's his name right? Yes. Um, from the MS Endpoint Manager folks, they have uh, they have a, uh, a a nice PR for this. So that's okay. We yeah. we'll we'll have it below. Yeah, we'll just do it below. I won't do this. Uh, Get embarrassed right. myself. Okay. So resource access policies. Um, pretty sure according to the docs, resource access policies are deprecated. So we didn't even mess with those. I'm not even sure what they do, honestly. Um, I haven't actually looked into them. But um, I mean, I guess it maybe that's conditional access. Yeah, I, I was thinking like OneDrive and conditional access and configurations and things like that. But according to this uh, workload, uh, oh, so yeah, all right, this is the other bit. It's part of device configuration. Um, and so like when you slide the slider, you're already getting it anyway. Uh, um, these policies are managed by Intune when you switch to device configuration yeah. workload. Starting in version two, 2203, these company resources access features in of Config Manager and this management or co-management workload is not, are no longer supported. 2203 so, yeah. no longer supported. So they already it's, deprecated it's, and it's done, yeah. It's the VPN, Wi-Fi, email, certificate device settings on the device. There so th go. this is if you go into the Config Manager console yeah, and on the left-hand side, yeah, where you've got all of these, um, no, it's not, it's the company, company resource, resource access. There you go. So these ones here, look, I'll be completely honest. I've not seen many customers actually use that, um, but that's, that's going away with 2203 apparently. So as part of that, it'll also remove from co-management. There you go. My guess is, yeah. Maybe so, I mean, see. if you're using these things right now, then pay attention to that section. But otherwise, I like, I don't even know that it, this may be the first time I've ever expanded that button. Maybe. I don't know. I've maybe seen it before. Um, anyway. When you set so, the exam. Yeah, I haven't done the exam. Are you kidding me? Um, okay. So, so then uh, let's talk about uh, the device configuration. This is, this is actually funny because the sliders are, they're nested, but they're, <laughs> they're not. They're not connected. Um, yes. They're not connected. Okay, so then let's talk about client apps. Um, so client apps are th this is this is company portal and software center and the you know the 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 how they play together. So when you slide the slider over to for client apps, it simply enables you to deliver Intune applications into uh, company software portal. Center. No, into company portal. But you've always been center. able to deliver Intune oh, apps into the company portal. Are you, you talking can't, config no. manager apps into the company portal? No, stop. No, a config manager managed device. Yes. With 
company portal installed that is also enrolled in Intune will not see Intune applications in the company portal unless you slide the client app slider. Uh -huh. So the co-management workload governs the visibility of Intune applications in company portal. Company portal, though, is wonderful because it uh, already has integration in several releases ago where if you install company portal, you can make it become your software center because you can see config manager apps in your company portal. You just can't see Intune apps in software center. So yes. um, what you, you can simply do is when you slide that slider over, what we've done is we actually created a custom client settings policy for software center that says when you uh, slide the slider, you also like the, the for our pilot collection that we were deploying this to initially when we slid any any devices in that collection got the slider slid so they could enable intune apps and also got the company portal as their default software center so that's yeah okay, those two go together now what that means is it doesn't disable software center it just means that when you get really it's when you get toast notifications or if you get a link to an app and you click on it it will attempt to launch company portal instead of attempting to launch. Uh, like if you get your toast for like or the little icon in the tray for uh, security updates or you've got a new app available, it opens company portal for you by default. Um, what's cool about company portal is still right now until business, the store for business goes away, you can under software uh, integrate your business, your store for business into config manager and you can then deploy, which I don't have it. Okay, I haven't set it up in a while. Um, you can deploy Company Portal, the store app from Config Manager natively. So that's kind of cool. Um, but also, if you slide the slider and you do the thing, and you also enable Company Portal as a, de a forced deployment uh, or required deployment from Intune to these devices, they'll just get Company Portal the moment they get that Intune policy. So that's kind of cool too. So you can do it however nice. you want. Um, and it's neat. A couple caveats on this, though. This, um, so what's cool about Software Center is that they have these cool custom tabs that you can make. So you can come in here and look, I made GIF Central one time, an Edge Surf game as custom tabs in Software Center. I think I've forgotten that I've done that. That's kind of neat. Let's see what we've I was going to ask, is there GIFs in there? No. Uh, oh, you know what? I have. Uh, OK, so my um, apparently I've got these turned off by. Yeah, because I didn't have it customized. That makes sense. Um, doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm losing losing track. All right. So yes. if you add a tab, you can add a custom URL. Did you know we were I was experimenting with this? Did you know that there's a web based company portal? Yes, I did. I don't know. I never can remember what the. Um, uh, it's it's software it, catalog. It's a weird URL to get there, and I never know what it is. And so I always just do this. I literally go to the docs and then click oh, on the company you, you portal website. The, thing. The, the company the, portal the, website. Company portal. So I was thinking software center back in the day, where it was the Silverlight portal, and it was no, 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 no. Config manager. Yeah. So you can come to yes. the, if you don't have the company portal installed yet. You can just come here, and so I'm on the server, so it says I don't have any apps. But check this out. We were experimenting with like, okay, how can we like, how can we uh, replace the applications tab with uh, still another tab? Because we wanted to disable the applications tab so that when you open up Software Center, it's no longer there. Because Software Center is still going to be there, and you can't get rid of it. So like, hey, let's let's just turn that off. Um, so we remove applications and then put our own custom one there, and that's kind of cool. I'm trying to move up. Let's see. So let's see what happens when it gets. So when you shove that guy in there, it doesn't, trust me, this doesn't actually work as well as you would hope it would. Um, because ultimately what happens is the moment you change this setting, you can't customize company or software center any longer. So all your right. customization goes away and your company portal is left at whatever state it was at. I've asked, I asked Danny about this. I said, hey, can we, can we like make this so that we can still, because I want to, I want to do both. I want to manage both things because I still have both things. I just want to, I don't want this selector to govern that. Because the this, shortcut's these still settings. there. Yeah, so it's still there. It's not going away. So like, let me do both and you, you can't. So it's kind of a weird, a weird thing. It's not a bug. It's just, eh. 
Somebody overlooked it. Didn't think the way I think, I guess. It's fine. 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 Can, can you set a lower policy that does no. one thing? No, you know, I, I, I tried that and it doesn't actually work. So the only way to make it happen is you have to apply the policy once to flip it and then apply and then remove it later and say, okay, now the way you could do it, here's, I mean, this would be clever. So you could, you could have a collection based on us, the knowing that you got the, the custom software center. And then anyway, we're going off on a rabbit trail, but you, you we, could, we, we, we really you could do it. You could do it. You could. All right. I'm going to sync because I just wanted to show you, this is kind of fun. Um, because this would be an alternative. Like if you don't want to push out company portal or something yet, kind of weird like why not do it because um, it's a server well i mean sure yeah i guess that's true like if you do that so that came down pretty fast so yep. this is kind of neat um except this part because it doesn't know who i am because it's running under the system context so you know i can get that that's probably not a good thing if it's running under system context i think it's running under system i don't know but Check it out. Like, there's my company portal inside Software Center, and, and then maybe I, and maybe my gifts. Call, do my gifts still work? Please tell me my gifts still work in here. They and might. And then can you go off and call uh, the Software Center inside the web-based company portal? So then you can do like Inception, Inception all the way through. That would be good. We should do that. Check this out. I still got animated gifts in Software Center. It's cool. Uh, apparently, I've done some goofing off with Software Center a bit. Anyway, uh, that's just so we've been messing around with this. Don't waste your time on it unless you think it's valuable. But I think it kind of wheels wheels fell off, so probably not. Um, so just anyway, client on apps. Intune. But the, okay, so here's the other piece about client apps. So if you're taking all your apps in Intune and you're deploying them to all devices, you got to be careful because now, okay, now I want to slide that slider. Oh, that means all my devices are going to get my apps. There's no link between the apps here in company port or in uh, in Intune and the apps on prem. And so if you've got the same application or basically un unless you unpublish the device the application out of config manager undeploy it from the devices that you have deployed the app to from Intune you're going to see both side by side in your company portal. Is 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 that called a race condition when they're both required or mandatory? I don't think so because there's two different services managing it integrated. They look like it's one service managing it, but they're they're still running. They still know who who gave it to them. I mean, they know it's one's but, running with Config Manager, one's but, running with Intune Management Extension. But if I don't, if I have the same application in Intune and the same application in Config Manager, and then I update the one in Intune, but I don't remove the deployment for the one in Config Manager, and the detection methods are different. Oh, is you could definitely potential? get into. Oh, sure. Uh, in fact, in fact, yes, yes, there is. Uh, we saw that. We we actually have had that happen because we, yeah, we're making transitions, doing things on our test machines, and they're getting both and stuff. So, the the challenge that we've got is okay. How do we how do we light or turn one off while we turn up the other? And also, we're moving from device targeted deployments to user targeted Oof. deployments. So. Strap in. This one's going to be a fun one. All right, here's what we're doing. Number one, deployments. We've got device-based collections. Obviously, this is not my my production environment, so it doesn't have uh, have all the, the kind of stuff. But imagine you've got a collection here that has an app advertised to it, and that app, um, or and and you've got a pile of devices here with primary users all assigned and stuff. So now I want to change to to user-based. So what we're doing is um, we're making we're, we're doing it in multiple sta stages because we know we have to get to Intune, but we've got to leverage some on-prem things to get there. So we are we we also have started about a year ago at least we've started doing user targeted applications for any new requests that we get. So any new things that we get, we we go into AD and we create a software. I mean, a, a, we call it a, a software group in AD. So just a regular security group and uh, for target for software targeting. When a user requests an app, the user goes in that group, and then we make a user collection where the uh, group is the only member of the the uh, collection, not the users themselves, just the group, um, which is very important because it changes the whole way that this works. I got a blog post on this if you're interested. 
Um, so you just add the group in here and then you add the users to the AD group. So now they get all their apps. So the idea is you take all of your devices, primary users, and you add them to the software group in AD. Mm -hmm. And then you make a new advertisement to the new user uh, collection for that app, for that same app. And then you undeploy the uh, and essentially uh, decommission the device based collection for that app and for those devices. So that's step number one. So once you do that, um, you can uh, then transition into Intune at, at some point. Now, if we were to do it one app at a time, we would do we would skip the redeploy from Config Manager and we would just go take the app from on-prem, build it in Intune, create a user targeted group there, add the primary users in Intune only, and then when we make the transition, we turn off device-based in Config Manager deployment, turn that whole app off, and we turn on the Intune-based version of it. We might end up doing that. I'm not sure, because we kind of want to do a big bulk load of transition all the things to user base first, and then we're going to have a long process of rationalizing and repackaging all of our apps before we move them to Intune, because we don't just bring junk in. We want to you know, vet it out before we move it, because we've got like 1,500 junk, apps. Junk in, junk out. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so anyway, that's kind of how we're how we're approaching it. I, maybe other folks have other ideas on this. I'd love to hear about it in the comments because this is this is probably the 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 biggest uh, longest piece of our project that we'll be going through. Um, and but we've got an awesome guy, Eric Haverstein, is working with us, doing phenomenal work. He's automated all the things. It's so cool. He's doing some really stuff. And we're all, speaking of Windows 365, we're going to be leveraging Win Windows 365 as part of his application packaging process. We're going to build it in Intune, and we're going to um, take the the application owner who's going to test it, and we're going to deploy uh, a Windows 365 license to that user. We're going to assign them a license. It's going to spin up a device and advertise their app to it. And we're going to send them a note and say, hey, You've got a machine with your name on it. Go test your apps and sign and off. And you have this time to sign it off. Otherwise, and then we're, we're going to deprovision your machine. Yeah, exactly. So we're very, very excited about this. This is like revolutionary for some of some of the pieces of this. And process. then have have you put like a um, like a power automate task over the top of it to send them the email and then have a, like a yes no so they can just click go yes this worked as expected and then it goes and disposes everything and goes and puts it into production or we haven't we haven't uh finished out we, it's all conceptual design at this point but they um we i mean i know i know he's been working through testing it and we know it'll work um but we're still working on like the like I, I met with our power apps guys this week and said hey i need an interface for this how do we like how do we build all of the pieces um dot net. So we'll, we'll see how it goes but i thought it's always hey, dot net, adam yeah right in dot net why don't we just, oh God, but PowerShell runs .NET, so that's perfect. I know how to do PowerShell. Exactly. We'll put a shortcut on the desktop of the test device. Two so shortcuts. So people can run PowerShell. No, so that you can run, you can finish the automation from the machine. You say successfully tested or didn't successfully test, and depending on what you do from the desktop, it's there. You know, it's just right there in the yep. thing. So that'd be exactly. kind of cool. I don't there's, know. There's, we'll work it out. There's options. All right. I'm talking really fast because I'm trying. Yeah, so there's so much to talk about. To talking about. No, no, this is all part of what we're supposed to be talking about. This no, is no, this. we're so behind. No, we're not. Wait, there's no uh, schedule on this. Uh, it's a lot. Well, we're, we're 40 minutes in. And that's, we've, we're almost done. Yeah. Just know that you can, you can in YouTube, you can slow this down if you really need to hear it slower. Or speed it up. If or you speed it up. I watch. I do everything on double speed in in YouTube. It's amazing. And audiobooks. You just get your brain just gets used to it. Maybe that's what's wrong. I'm I'm so used to it. All right. Office okay. click to run. Office click to run apps. Um, I'll be honest. Start a config manager now. I'll be on. I'll be honest. I have a question about this one that I'm not entirely sure uh, if it really does what I think it does because uh, I, we were having a conversation this morning. Or yesterday about this with our office guy and we said man i don't know i'm not entirely sure that this workload does what i've been thinking it's supposed to do um because what what um what it appears to do is make office available in the company portal 
so that you can manage Office from Company Portal and from Intune. But it's like it's not really sure. Or it's not really clear on that it, it whether it does anything to the update channels and things with Office, which I've always if felt like. If you deploy a policy out from Intune, it will. Um, but it needs to be certain versions as a minimum, and th th well, it's very nuanced. Well, but Office policies come from the cloud, the Office cloud configuration Well, they can policies. come from um, settings catalog as well. Or they are, yeah, if you're using the Office 2016 stuff, which I would not recommend. But some people do. Well, okay, fair enough. So if like, you are, so I guess maybe if, that's the clarification. If, if people are pulling across their GPO straight like for like into uh, Intune, they're going to use the um, settings catalog or admin templates, right? Oh, but but those office policies are not governed by uh, they're not governed by the office the the client apps policy. I'm like fairly certain they're not uh, the um, those are governed by the device the device configuration policy uh, slider. We might we might have to do some research and testing on this because I've I'm having that crisis of faith on this one at this point because I'm like man I've really been really certain about this and now I'm I'm but questioning the simple answer is mindfulness. Look, just test it. Double check if 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 you're doing Office updates or anything in Config Manager, test it, put it into Intune, uh, into the pilot on Intune, and see what changes. But we didn't really see anything in our testing. So, the. Okay, so while I'm here, so on the Office Cloud policy, I'll sh just uh, we we've had a whole session on this with the, the yep. Office Rangers, so I'm not going to go into the deep on this. However, you can come into the, and I, I highly recommend using this because these policies will apply to any device that a user logs into with your corporate credentials, and that's pretty cool. So they'll follow it's the so user good. and they'll get their policies wherever they're at. That's part of your data so governance, and you should definitely look into this. So it's Office Man. Yeah. So. And it comes down when you log into Office, the policies refresh. Yep. And it's a completely independent engine and stuff. However, it does absolutely override GPOs. We've watched our policies. We'll have competing policies in our GPOs, uh, GPO and, and in the registry, and we'll have the cloud ones come down, and you can see them. And you definitely, it definitely wins. But it is not at all governed by any co-management slider. If you configure these policies and you push them out, they just beat out GPO all day long. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so these are completely independent and they're completely based on the user logging into that box and having a policy applied to their user account from your tenant. That is it. Nice. Yep. Um, so the other piece here is the monthly enterprise situations where you can enable servicing and kick your devices over to monthly enterprise. This also is not this is the piece I thought was governed by co-management, but according to the docs, it doesn't appear to be. So let me put some clarity on what I mean by that. Um, so this policy will allow you, will essentially let you choose any device that is on, you pick the channel of the devices that you want to target and to convert to current channel, uh, or sorry, monthly enterprise, wrong, wrong thing, to move every, so I would say any device you find on any other channel, dump them all on monthly enterprise. That's essentially what this is doing. Um, and it has some basic update and deadline settings and things like that. The the piece that's doing this is there is the uh, Office Com management um, Com object on the device, and um, it is managed from Config Manager. It is managed in the client settings policies. Uh huh. So if you go to your update settings on your Config Manager client settings policies. You go to software updates. Believe it or not, this governs three different things at a minimum. So you have yes, you have software updates themselves. Yep. Then you have enable the management of Office 365 client agent, of which is a completely it. different thing. And you also have third party updates. Kind of neat. Um, yep. And so as but you move those workloads, you have three different things that potentially could be moved over as you do this so when you so slide the window we haven't got to windows update for business things but windows update policies do not govern these policies the office or third-party update policies are not governed by that so my point is there this setting here will toggle 
the uh, there's an office comm management agent engine in the comm whatever what, what is it um, decom config DS, what is it you know what I'm talking about yep it's the decom yes distributed communication or decom config com cnf that's is that right that's, yep, that's it this thing I'm saying yep. run command yeah so there is a in inside of here one of the settings it's been a minute since I looked at it. I always just hit yes. I don't know what that message is for, but it's always a good thing to hit yes to that. Um, inside here, there will be an office that's comm the rule thumb of any time you see any random message just on a Windows yes. computer. Just hit yes. I know, I know. Um, but there, this is a server, so it won't. It likely won't be on the server. But if it was governed by it, it would. The setting would be uh, configured here, and it is not here on the server. It's fine. Um, regardless, the docs have more detail about it. But my point is. This, there is a setting in Config Manager that you need to make sure that you're turning off as you turn on the Office Cloud policies if you want, just to prevent conflicts and all that sort of stuff. But this allows you to stop deploying Office updates from Config Manager and move to pulling them down as part of your client uh, settings that are getting pulled from Office Cloud. So, that's so kind of I, I want to circle back on something here, Adam, because what you're saying sounding great, right? We're going to go to the Intune. We're going to download a whole heap of stuff. But all I'm hearing is my network team sitting there and yelling and screaming at me going, what do you mean you're downloading everything off the internet now? No, 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 Steve. No, 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 Steve. You're silly. Um, oh, I'm comfortable uh, with that. Okay, so number one, you've still got your Config Manager client installed, right? Yep. And I'm pretty sure you probably, you better have be using things like delivery optimization at a minimum. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. And turning on Leadbat and Branch Cache and maybe even Pure Cache and all those wonderful things that Microsoft helps us with. Delivery yep. optimization is pretty cool because delivery optimization can handle Intune related things. And there's a whole oh, list of okay, stuff. Cool. There's a whole list of things, including the Intune uh, Win32 apps. Did you know that? Nice. I did. So okay. delivery optimization manages Win32 apps and Windows updates and all the things. And if you have, and especially if you're leveraging a Microsoft Connected Cache server, the things nice. that your clients are downloading from the internet are going to get cached just like they should have already been being cached for any of the other content you've been deploying to them. So uh, if you can, if you're leveraging these technologies, you should be able to uh, still manage your update load and your your network bandwidth load um, across your platforms. The, so my network team's not going to yell at me so long as they open the right ports. As long as you, you know, set your stuff up right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You're, maybe your network team just enjoys yelling at people. And so I don't know that this is going to keep them from yelling at you, Steve. But, you know, hey, welcome. But, Steve, did you know that inside of Intune, there is a delivery optimization template Ooh. that you can configure Fancy. and deploy? And uh, I have now. I'll, I'll confess, I have not actually used this. I haven't done any testing on this, but I assume, and I know, I know it exists. So that's you know, that's bonus. But it's got the same configuration settings that you yep. normally would get from Config Manager. Now, the thing you might not know is when you're enabling the del delivery optimization setting in Config Manager that it is. Uh, what mode it's doing, what, what you know, what it's doing to the modes of the of DO on the device and all that sort of stuff. So, um, but it is changing the same settings. So if I enable these two, and then yep. on my boundary group, I enable the ability to to um, connect to cache. Uh, no, the um, enable uh, peer. Um, where am I at? This one. So. Allow peer downloads in this boundary group. This one is the one, this is the key to making DO yep. actually work. So you, you enable DO on the devices, and what it's going to do is it's going to take the boundary group that, that your device is a member of, and it's going to create a unique ID, and it's going to stamp okay, yep. that ID into the registry for the device, yep, and yep, yep, for all the group ID. devices that share that same group ID can peer with each other as long as you've enabled this to allow them to peer with each other. So nice. that's uh, and then you can even grant be more granular and say only use peers in the same subnet. Um, and then you can also say, hey, you know what? I, I want to use DPs over peers and with within the same. So got some options here. And then this one, I love this one. But um, and, and if you've got if you've got connected cache and things enabled, 
that one's just amazing. It works. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so all of these things are really beneficial if you're leveraging them all. If you're not, dig in. There's lots of blogs, lots of things about this stuff to make your lives a lot easier around data and data optimization. But back so to one yes, thing that I would probably just throw in there um, is there's a lot of conversation around can you use Microsoft Connected Cache without Config Manager Server? The answer is yes, it does work. I don't know how you configure it and install it, but. So you just install an IIS box and set it up. There's actually some docs on it, um, but it is supported. There you go. So that's kind of cool. So you could yeah. kill off Config Manager and still have Connected Cache Server. Now, yep. what you probably don't want to do is spin that Connected Cache Server up in the cloud. <laughs> kind of won't do anything cache for is you. designed to be <laughs> on the same subnet. Mind right. you, delivery optimization not only needs three computers in your environment or in that subnet group, whatever you want to call it, that has the content that's going to be shared. Only the first three computers will download it. Once it's there, yes. it shares. Yeah. Because we're all um, friends here and we like uh, sharing. I was having a conversation about some um, with a with a buddy this week. We were talking about uh, an environment where they have this really poor WAN length uh, out to this you know island out in the South Pacific somewhere or something. And like just the challenges they were having there, and they've got DP out there, but they said, well, how do we do connected cache things? And do and you know what? How's this going to work? And you know the the advice was look. You're going to have to pull the data a little bit, but you can pre-initiate those downloads so that it gets cached before your clients all start trying to pull it from the internet. So there's yep. methods and 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 ways you can do that, especially like even peer caching and things. Um, if you've never checked them out, the guys from Two Pint Software um, have some amazing documentation around all of this stuff. They just this is what they live and breathe, oh, yeah. um, and so check their stuff out. They've got just amazing things. All right, so. Back to the, the settings here in delivery optimization in Intune. I know we're kind of going off on this little tangent, but just while we're here, just to point this out. Um, so what you're getting when you enable the settings we've just described, you're getting blended peering. And so you're yep. going to, in the registry, it's going to say it's it's a two, DO's configured right. download mode two. And then you, so your group source ID, you could say, all right, I want to do shared an AD. So now remember, we don't have a config manager did, uh, boundary group enabled. Uh, for this to work. And so uh, in this scenario where you've you've gotten rid of config manager altogether and you're trying to do DO is kind of where I'm what I'm thinking as I'm saying this. So so you could still say if I'm in it, if I've got AD based devices still, I could use an AD site. That's almost what your boundary group's probably doing. If you're doing if you've got your boundaries based on your AD sites, probably gets you pretty close. I don't know. Yeah. It's my guess. That's how I would, I would at least start with that. Um, what are, you, what are you thinking? Um, so what I'd be thinking is if you scroll back up, um, realistically, what you want to aim for is either the DNS suffix or DHCP um, user option. What that gives you is the ability to sit there and go per DHCP scope, I'm going to say this configuration. So that way you can constrain it to that scope if you wanted to constrain it to the scope. Or if you're saying, well, I only want to share when it's in my inside my corporate network, which is sure, um, yeah. that's where you sit there and say DNS suffix. And so it looks um, like so you could also do a, you could make a custom correct. group, and so you'd have to you'd have to so um, create a custom GUI that you deploy. Yes, to be very clear, that group ID is not an AAD group or any of that. It's just completely custom. It is a random string. This is based on delivery optimization groups. It's so much the same as what we had with removable media. It is a group of devices for this feature, not an AD or AAD group. Yeah. Now, what's not clear is does does this just stamp the group for me when I send this policy down, or do I, I have to stamp the policy? Do so. I have to stamp that GUI some other way? I believe you need to stamp. You need to create a group for all the devices. Yeah, so I don't know. Anyway, that's not the point of this conversation. Anyway, yep. I've gone off on the rails. Anyway, that's do. Let's jump back to the last, uh, the last guy here. So that's just kind of wrapping up how you're going to deliver all that content from the cloud. 
And the last little bit here, and this really, this one should be the one that, like between this one and compliance policies, I mean, like kick those over right away. I mean, compliance policy, yep. just do it because you're not going to, it's no impact on your users. If you haven't deployed any apps from, from Intune yet, uh, if you don't have any of them deployed yet, great. Slide that one over, kick your users to company portal, deploy company portal out to them. Um, Windows update policies, switch over to Windows update for business and just burn that WSUS server down, yep. man. Um, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. I will tell you this from a security and compliance perspective, our compliance rates for Windows updates went up the month that we enabled Windows updates for business. We had clients that were out there just with broken config manager clients or whatever, who knows, that all just came to life. I got feature updates deployed to machines that just never would get them. I got updates deployed. It was amazing. So um, highly recommend it. The uh, And one of the benefits you get from that is uh, you can do drivers and firmware. It's not the new drivers and firmware that's coming, but it, that's coming at some point. We'll see it someday. But the... Um, you do benefit in your so and, and just for windows updates you would come into windows update rings create a new profile and you would configure your update policies the same way that you currently have them configured in your config manager client settings policy so if you come into your uh, client settings and you go to your software updates the same settings that you have here yep. um so some of them some of these are the settings so these are like your general client settings and then the other settings are the settings that you would configure on your ADRs uh, for the actual deployments of the software. You take a combination of, okay, my monthly updates for Windows 10, what, what is my deployment settings for my different target rings of devices? And so whatever you normally would set that up to, to say uh, always deploy on the, you know, it, mandatory the first or you know as soon as possible and then mandatory after seven days okay cool you go into your um windows update policies and you configure the settings Specify the that. same way um no. and so, so one thing to call out is active hours when we say active hours that's when you start your work day and active hours end is when you end your work day not the alternate yeah it's not the other way around like these are which this is, is what we've got everywhere else yeah, so this is the off-limit hours. Don't do anything to me during this hour, this time. Yeah. Between exactly. these hours. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you've got configuration options here. You do also, now I don't I haven't done this yet, but there are Windows Update for Business policies that are configurable as Intune settings catalog options. I don't know. And, and Aria has some great blogs on this stuff if you need to, but I don't know if you I I don't think you should set them at all, but maybe there's some things in there that make sense for your org. That would be beneficial. Just whatever you do, don't make don't make these things overlap. Um, so for most folks, this should just be it. You should be able to do this. But the point I was going to make here is that you also get Windows drivers, uh, or you can allow or block them. So, uh, but it's so an, it's just an on or off, and you get what you the get. The thing that I'm going to call out there: these are critical that drivers that are being flagged as critical by your vendor, not the optional driver updates. So if you were to go to Windows Update and you click check for updates, it's anything that would automatically come down. It's not the other stuff in the optional tab. And that's very important because like we're dealing with that right now with a vendor where we've got, we had a, we, not to scare you, but you should be scared. Um, if you are behind on doing driver and firmware updates on your devices, think very long and hard about turning the setting on without a lot of testing because we did we turned it on and we it, it didn't go so well because we had some machines that got bricked um there there was a there's a conflict and there's an and there's there's optional updates that fix the bug that we hit but they weren't required and they didn't come down how about that um and so we had some yogas oh shoot i said the name um that uh that all bricked their firmware please fix this um and so, uh, and the only way to do it is you have to like push a push pin under the bottom to reset the thing, which was a new thing for all of us. It's like, we never had to do this. Um, so it's been fun, fun ride. So we just turned that joker off and we said, all right, we're going to do something else for now because the, okay, so really the, the actual deal here is if you think about your deferrals for everything, say, okay, if we set a deferral period, the deferral is the date that the 
the update is released, how many days after that do you want to wait before you advertise or make this available to your devices? That's what that is. So if you have a driver that's been sitting out there for two years that has never been deployed or more likely like a BIOS update or a firmware update, those are the ones that are going to get you. Um, if you're not doing regular updates on those, if they're old, they immediately Test. they immediately get deadlined on those boxes. Now they will still follow your deadline settings, but they are immediately deployed. Like they are dead. They are they are. Uh, what, the deadline has been reached, and then they immediately deadline and do whatever your settings are here. So my deadline settings. All right, we got that, and then you got some grace period maybe, and great, good luck. So. Um, Keep that in mind. That one that one definitely got and us a little bit. I, I'm going to stress this as much as the last switch scares a lot of people. Leave it on all the way down the bottom. Oh, this one? Yes. Auto reboot before deadline. Uh, it should be as it hits the deadline. Yes, you want to force your end users to have the computer auto restart on them. Yes, they're going to sit there and complain, but then you turn around and go, but I gave you two days or I gave you four days to go and install these updates. And then I gave you a grace window where I've been giving you notifications. I don't care that you're a senior manager. You can read the notifications coming up on your computer. It happens once a month. Your computer needs to be restarted to install these updates. Yep. So just fair warning, the, the drivers are the big, the big thing that's just kind of scary here, um, and it is a big deal. Um, so know your environment, know your hardware, test it. Um, even things like making sure that if you've got BitLocker or some other third-party encryption enabled, that when you've got an old box, it's got old BIOS, when it gets that update, man, make sure that it's not going to BitLocker on your, or, you know, ask for a recovery key. Because yep. I mean, I had a guy today that that happened to because we just we were <laughs> interesting. We tried to deploy this update this manually from Config Manager. We deployed a BIOS update to our devices and all of our testing showed cool. BitLocker handles it just fine. No big deal. This guy got it, got the update last night. He comes in this morning. He's BitLocker. Great. And for some random fluke, his BitLocker key was not in anything. Oh, well, so we break this machine and. Uh, so he became a Windows 11 autopilot tester for us today. So he's happily on Azure AD. Yay, we did it. Um, anyway, I, I'm proud of you, Adam, that you've made the you've started to make the switch. Oh yeah, yeah. And so so one of the things that as we make this transition that has made this really easy for us is the at least segregating our the the targeting of our devices and our policies. We are only doing Azure AD. Azure AD only on our Windows 11 boxes moving forward as we do autopilot. So that means that uh, all of my policies, I can put filters on them, most of them, some of them still missing. Uh, I can put filters on them and say Windows 11 only. And so I can deploy to all devices and then Windows 11. And then as I'm ready, I can add in my other deployment rings for other devices as I want to move my sliders over. Um, nice. And I said we were That's down at the cool. bottom, but we didn't actually get down to the big, the big one, the big guy here, which is device. Oh, they do move together whenever you haven't messed with them. Um, so device configuration is the last one to talk about. This is kind of everything else that isn't caught by the other Intune policies. So let's go into the Intune console and just go through this a moment. So when we're talking endpoint security things, so all the, the all the defender, you know, all the endpoint protection stuff. Those are all governed by that slider, all of these settings. So yep. um, BitLocker, AV, disk encryption, uh, which is BitLocker, <laughs> firewall, all these are governed by the endpoint, the defender, mm -hmm. the endpoint protection yep. slider. OK, um, then when we go back, losing my windows. Mm -hmm. So then the other uh, major ones are, so we've got our update ring policies, which don't actually, I mean, I guess they sort of compete with some GPOs if you were deploying GPOs, but really these just compete with Windows Update 
uh, policies coming from config manager, hopefully, is oh, that's the only place you've got them configured. So they just override those policies and and that's managed kind of at the client level, not um, not at the group policy level. And then the rest of most of it is right here under configuration profiles. So if you Good are point. using if you are using templates for any of your items, the template name should tell you whether kind of whether or not it's being picked up as a type uh, related to the policy. So in, if you're using endpoint protection here, that's still governed by that endpoint protection slider. So um, the, the like the certificates and resource access, the VPN, Wi-Fi, like these are all the ones that would have been governed by the uh, resource access policy that we were looking at. Um, so just know that if you're using those, those are all largely governed, potentially governed by uh, any of the sliders that match those names. Then everything else that's in settings catalog is going to be governed by uh, the device configuration slider. And so what you're saying is device configuration slider is the really important one and do it first. Oh no. I'm saying I'm saying make sure you know what you're doing with that one. Um actually it's it so it's a two-edged sword. If you slide the device configuration slider and have not configured any policies in Intune and deployed them yet, really more, not the configuration, but if you have not assigned any Intune policies to anybody yet um, that you don't want to have them, then you will have no impact on your devices getting policies from GPO. Um, but essentially moving that slider allows Intune to block most of or all of your group policy settings from applying to the device. Now, specifically, nice. There is a setting that does that, which is uh, now in settings catalog. It used to be a CSP. Long ago, when we first started this, this series, we set this as a CSP. But now it is a um, settings catalog item, and it is called MDM wins over GP GPO. And yep. that is, I'm not even going to try. No, it's, it's right here at the top. It's, no, it's not. Soon going to be right at the top. There's two, there's two policies that I have set in my default policy that I deployed out to all devices right away. And that's this one, MDM wins over GP. And then this other one, the Azure AD preferred tenant name, which works great if you've got a single tenant name that all your devices are, are on. Um, for that, but that'll hopefully get us there. Okay, it should be this one. I knew it was an A, I thought it was. There we go, preferred Azure AD tenant name. Okay, so MDM wins over GP, MDM policy is used, uh, and the GP, GP policy is blocked. So deploy it's that guy. It's interesting that that dropdown is a drop down. basically binary, but should uh -huh. just be a checkbox, but anyway. Yeah, who knows? This one is cool because it keeps you from having to type in your entire email address or UPN every single time you sign in uh, to your device. You can put... Um, in tune training. Yeah, but this is my lab. Actually, this is Intune training. Man, I'm my config manager is in my is in my is my lab, and then this is the Intune training. Um, yeah. It's all good. So anyway, uh, you set this, and then when you sign into the device, it doesn't prompt you. You don't have to put in your full UPN. Okay. So. So I don't like that. I prefer my users putting in my putting in their email address. Well, I don't like it. Uh, it's boring. It's annoying. Um, now, if you have Hello for Business enabled, you kind of only really type that the first time. And then, oh, but in yeah, a, but in, right. a, in my environment, yeah. like we have it set to not yeah. remember the last logged on username, and so every single time you sign in, you have to put that. So, whatever, decide what you want. But I like both of these, and I apply, I deploy them, I deployed them to all devices right away. And there's no competing GPO to block them or anything, so they they just get uh, get these whenever you um, slide that slider over for them. Okay, then um, everything else in here. Is should essentially map over to a relevant GPO that you're going to map from yep. Intune. Now, should you go through and map no. every single GPO that you've got currently over to a thing? You no. could use a thing over here that that is called um, uh, Group Policy Analytics, which is a great tool for helping you determine what you have and determining what you shouldn't migrate over. Um, the simple but, uh, answer is don't migrate anything over that you don't need. Yes. But using the tools to help you identify what you have and then 
going from there is great. And selectively choosing what you need is also great. So point being, as long as for all of these sliders, really, as long as you don't already have things built and configured and set to deploy to all devices, you should be able to granularly select who you're going to target and move things over to. Now, with the uh, GPO uh, or with with GPOs, if you um, set the MDM wins over GP setting, then any any competing Intune policy that you deploy should uh, beat out any com any matching GPO that you have configured for that device. But if you've got GPOs that are configured in AD and you haven't set co corresponding Intune policies, the GPOs still continue to apply, which is actually kind of cool because like we're looking at our policy saying there's a couple of them we're not going to migrate, but we're going to leave in place and we're just going to decommission them when we move to Windows 11. So things like uh, like the fun we had yesterday. Config. It's, um, well, I don't have the W. That's all coming from Config Manager. Um, but why? So my wireless uh, policy, my 802.x policies, those are kind of business critical things that I really don't want to touch. Because if it goes south, you could lock people off the network. I'm not trying to say that to scare you, but I'm a little bit concerned about it. And so I'm going to leave them in GPO and I'm just not going to mess with them, but I'll apply those policies, the corresponding policies in Windows 11 later. Um, maybe there's not really a big thing to worry about, but in our testing yesterday, we we had some trouble, but it was environmental mostly, but it scared us enough. Anyway, um, the, the challenge then is, okay, do you need to undeploy GPOs from your machines as you move them to Intune? Technically, no. But I like it because it makes it clean and it helps you highlight any misses in your Intune policies. So if you have somehow managed to misconfigure your Intune policies and haven't quite mapped everything over that you thought you did, um, and, G and having the group policy still deployed to the, those devices, it could potentially be setting something still that you're not overriding or matching in Intune. And you, by removing the group policy at some point, you can highlight where you've missed. And I think that's great because someday you're going to say, hey, we're done. We're going to turn off group policies. And then you're going to find then that you mess it up. We're so turning off the domain controller. Yeah. So do this as you're doing your pilot rings. Try to exclude, uh, put in, put in uh, block policies. Uh, when you do your delegation, you can go to advanced, and you can ex do a, a deny read or uh, deny apply, uh, and block policies individually for the your pilot groups as you're moving them to vet everything out. So you're not having to impact everybody or move a bunch of things around. Now, this also assumes that you've got a decent group policy structure and you've got a clue what's in your environment. And good luck. Can't help you there if it's, if it's bad. Have fun. Um, so, so, Adam, I'm, I'm going to suggest something here. That we stop talking and call it yeah. quits. Yeah. I, yeah. I think we've, we've, we've gone down the rabbit hole a lot. Um, by the sounds of it, you're uh, well down the journey of doing that conversion from on-prem managed to cloud managed, which is Awesome, I'm I'm super impressed, um, and all those sliders are just super interesting. Yeah, it is. I'm I'm very excited about where we're at, and honestly, it's I mean this is a testament to the channel here, honestly, because I've been learning this as we've gone, and everything that we've been doing here has enabled me to do the things that I'm doing in the real world, and I really like that. So um, ultimately, the the whole point of this, if you've made it this far, is I know it blew through a lot of stuff. Hopefully some of it absorbs. Go back and watch, you know, watch it up in chunks. But this is doable. This is possible. And in a couple of months, all of my, I mean, actually, hopefully by the end of this month, my devices will largely be uh, cloud managed. And by the MMS. Next, by MMS, my devices are going to be fully cloud managed. And then the next step is cloud native look out boys so i'm excited and girls yeah boys and girls yes well i wouldn't run over the girls so i don't have to tell them to look out i'd be polite move around so you know true, true. <sighs> anyway that's it thanks for hanging in there i know this is a whole lot but hopefully you find value in it and make sure you uh click that subscribe button and uh, come along to OMS. We uh, look forward to seeing everybody there uh, at the uh, inaugural Intune Training Live event. Yeah, and uh, leave some comments and tell us what you think about all this stuff. It's fun. Please. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye.